Shalom, welcome to Challenging Torah, a project of the Malibu Jewish Center and Synagogue. Our challenge this week is to be holy, kadoshim. This is ground zero of Torah. If you were to unroll the scroll and put a pointer in the middle, stick a pin in it, chapter 19 of Leviticus is where you will end up, which begins with the words, speak to the congregation of all of the people of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Hillel, the great sage, when asked, how do you define Judaism on one foot? said, quoting from this very portion, Leviticus 19, V'yahavta l'reyecha kamocha. You will love your neighbor as yourself. All the rest is commentary. Go and study. Wow. You should be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Is that a plural you or a personal you? And the answer to the question is both. The community as a whole functions as a holy Am Kadosh, but I personally am responsible. So we see in the opening mitzvot that are given, honor your father and your mother, or reveal your mother and your father, and keep my Sabbaths, for I am the Lord your God. This is a personal and a communal mitzvah, obligation. Both of these are true as we look at what is holiness and how can I reach it. Holiness is often seen as something that is separate and apart, like the Sabbath day is a holy day, as separate from Yamechol, the days of the week. And that's true. But as we look at this portion of Kedusha, of Kedoshim, of holiness, Though the sages call holiness the separation moment, I really appreciate the words of the great scholar Martin Buber, who said there's the holy and the not yet holy. In the words of the great Rob Cook, we are here to release the holiness, the sparks that are embedded in every action that we take. So how do we become holy? The mitzvot are here for us to follow. And we say, oh, well, we, we, you know, we're not religious, but we're spiritual. That's the majority of America, actually. And we'll figure it out. We'll know in our gut. We may know in our gut to revere our mother and our father. Not so much on the Shabbat already, you know. I mean, do we actually turn the computer off? But maybe we understand at least the concept. And then there are the concepts that are hard for us, like third one out in this list of this portion, keep the corners of your field or the fallings of your grapes in your vineyards for the poor. Do not gather them. This is not a donation. This is your obligation to leave the corners of your fields. In this way, we are assured that there is food for those who are poor in a way that is mandated. This is called mitzvah help, right? You probably wouldn't think of this on your own and open up your gateways. And then the Torah continues, to all of our business dealings, you shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind. And we go, oh, I wouldn't put a block in front of somebody who's blind. But if I were a loan agent in the 2000s, I might come up with a loan for somebody who looked like they couldn't read the loan agreement or figure out a way to make the balloon payment, leading to a huge crisis in America, because this was the mitzvah that was violated. You are not to cheat each other in business dealings. The Talmud then details what that means, but the mitzvah is given here. And my favorite of all of them in this portion really is line 33 of 19. You shall not wrong the stranger who dwells with you, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Today in this country, we're dealing with real questions of refugees and immigration. And what does it mean to shut our gates to others of a 
Muslim religion or those who cannot qualify in many ways to enter uh, or the stranger who lives among us. God says, you're not going to figure this out alone. I'm going to help you. This is a mitzvah. Do it. And you will be holy as I am holy, says the Lord, your God. Have a separate, wonderful, holy, light-filled Shabbat.